Once again, Starship showcased exceptional performance across the board during its sixth integrated flight test, even though the booster catch attempt was aborted. Let's take a detailed look at every phase of this groundbreaking mission. Starship Flight 6, featuring Ship 31 and Booster 13, lifted off from Starbase on Tuesday afternoon to begin its exciting suborbital mission and complete the mission objectives. The sight of the rocket clearing the launch pad was nothing short of surreal, with all engines performing nominally during the liftoff and ascent phases. The vehicle passed through maximum aerodynamic pressure 62 seconds after liftoff, a key milestone that tests the rocket's structural integrity. The thermal protection system tiles on the ship appeared to withstand the vibrations of the flight. Around 2 minutes and 34 seconds into the flight, the booster's outer engines shut down as planned, leaving only the inner three engines burning. Shortly after, Ship 31 ignited all six engines, smoothly separated from the booster stage, and began its journey to space. After a quick flip maneuver, Booster 13 successfully reignited its center 10 engines for boost backburn and began its journey back to Earth. At around the 3 minute and 26 second mark, booster engines shut down and the boost backburn concluded. The hot stage ring was jettisoned next to reduce the overall mass of the booster. Future booster iterations will feature an integrated lightweight hot stage ring that will not need to be jettisoned. As the booster descended toward Earth, the mission's flight director determined that the required conditions for a safe return and catch were not met. SpaceX revealed that this decision was based on automated health checks, which indicated that the systems of the launch tower were not in an optimal state for the planned maneuver. Consequently, the catch attempt was aborted. In response, the booster followed a pre-programmed contingency plan. It shifted to a backup trajectory and executed a controlled landing burn, resulting in a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Although the catch attempt did not proceed, the successful splashdown underscores the robustness and reliability of SpaceX's contingency protocols. The exact reasons behind the decision to forego the catch attempt will become clearer once SpaceX releases an official statement in the coming days. The data gathered from this mission will undoubtedly contribute to further refinements, improving the chances of success in future tests. While the booster safely splashed down in the ocean, Ship 31 continued its journey into orbit. Approximately eight minutes after liftoff, the ship's engines shut down as planned, marking the start of its coasting phase around Earth. At the 37-minute mark, one of the ship's sea-level Raptor engines successfully ignited as planned. The engine fired for approximately five seconds, demonstrating its capability to restart in microgravity. This crucial test validated the engine's ability to perform a controlled deorbit burn, a key maneuver required for future orbital missions to ensure precise re-entry and landing. 40 minutes into the flight, Ship 31 began re-entering Earth's atmosphere. This deep angle of attack chosen for this flight subjected the vehicle to significantly higher re-entry heat than in previous tests. As the ship descended, intense heating from atmospheric friction caused the plasma to envelop it, testing the thermal protection system tiles to their limits. This high-risk maneuver also stressed the aerodynamic flaps, assessing their ability to stabilize the ship during extreme re-entry conditions. The results of these tests are crucial for refining the spacecraft's design to withstand the challenges of orbital and interplanetary missions. As the ship entered the denser layers of the atmosphere, frictional heating intensified, causing the heat tiles to endure extreme conditions, glowing red-hot during re-entry. Remarkably, the heat tiles performed exceptionally, remaining firmly attached and effectively safeguarding the ship's structure from the immense thermal stresses. Notably, Four heat shield tiles on Ship 31's nose cone were intentionally left uninstalled before launch. This allowed SpaceX to test the secondary heat-resistant material underneath the tiles under direct exposure to re-entry conditions. By subjecting this material to intense heating, SpaceX aims to evaluate its thermal performance and determine if it can provide adequate protection in the event of primary tile loss during future missions. One of the forward flaps experienced intense heating and a burn through due to the ship's high angle of attack. This outcome was anticipated as part of the test, designed to push the vehicle to its limits. As the ship became transonic, it transitioned from a belly flop orientation to a nose down configuration. This intentional maneuver subjected the flaps to additional stress, allowing engineers to gather valuable performance data. Despite the harsh conditions, the flaps survived and successfully guided Starship to its designated landing zone in the Indian Ocean. At the 65-minute mark, Ship 31 ignited its engines for the landing burn and executed the flip maneuver. It concluded the mission with a controlled splashdown in the ocean, meeting its final objective. The daylight splashdown, in contrast to the nighttime splashdowns of previous tests, provided spectacular visuals of the ship's final moments. 
It also allowed SpaceX to conduct better visual analysis and collect more detailed data, offering valuable insights into Starship's performance during descent and landing. This flight test was a significant milestone in SpaceX's journey towards a fully reusable spacecraft. Elon Musk celebrated the success of the mission, announcing that SpaceX plans to conduct one more ocean landing. And if that test proves successful, the next step will be attempting to catch the ship using the launch tower. Notably, certain sections on the sides of Ship 31 were left without heat tiles before Flight 6. These unshielded areas are being tested as potential locations for future catch-enabling hardware. During the flight, visuals showed noticeable warping of the unshielded steel under peak re-entry heating and aerodynamic stress. Although this did not affect the vehicle's descent or landing, it raises concerns about whether such unshielded sections can withstand re-entry without heat tiles. SpaceX may need to reinforce or redesign these areas before mounting specialized hardware for precision tower arm landings. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson congratulated SpaceX on the success of Starship Flight 6 highlighting the importance of the in-space Raptor engine restart as a significant step toward orbital flight. He emphasized that Starship's advancements are closely tied to NASA's Artemis program, underscoring their shared mission to return humans to the moon and pave the way for future exploration of Mars. In the coming days, SpaceX will share more details about Flight 6, including what went well and what didn't as they look at the data. Be sure to keep an eye on our channel for updates and news. The upcoming Starship flight test designated Flight 7, will feature Starship 33, the first Block 2 prototype, paired with Booster 14. This flight marks a significant step in SpaceX's Starship program as it transitions to more advanced prototypes. Both Starship 33 and Booster 14 have completed their cryogenic proof testing and are being prepared for static fire testing. In parallel, work is progressing on Starship 34, the successor to Ship 33, its final aft section was recently moved into Megabay 2, marking the completion of its stacking procedures. The next steps include the installation of aft flaps, followed by plumbing and electrical integration. Once these tasks are completed, Ship 34 will be rolled out to Massey's for its cryogenic proof testing. Booster 15, the designated partner for Ship 34, is stationed inside Megabay, and is currently being prepared for its cryogenic proof testing. You may have noticed that Flight 6 did not require a new FAA license, unlike previous Starship test flights. This is because the FAA had previously authorized SpaceX to conduct up to five Starship launches annually, provided they adhered to the Flight 5 mission plan. However, the upcoming Flight 7, featuring Ship 33, will require a new FAA license due to its departure from the previously approved flight configuration. The FAA's licensing process has historically caused delays for Starship launches. Industry leaders have often criticized the existing regulatory framework, citing unnecessary obstacles and confusion, particularly around the Part 450 rules. These regulations, introduced in March 2021, were intended to streamline licensing for launches and re-entries. However, many companies in the aerospace industry have reported the opposite effect with increased delays and ambiguity. In response to these criticisms, the FAA announced on November 14 the creation of a new Aerospace Rulemaking Committee to review and potentially overhaul the Part 450 regulations. The committee's primary goal is to improve clarity, flexibility, and efficiency in the licensing process while fostering innovation within the industry. The committee will hold its first meeting in early December and is tasked with delivering a report containing recommendations by late summer 2025. If successful, the committee's work could result in significant improvements to launch licensing procedures, paving the way for more frequent and predictable rocket launches. This would particularly benefit SpaceX's Starship and Falcon missions, which aim to push the boundaries of reusable spaceflight and interplanetary exploration. At the 31st Annual Baron Investment Conference, Gwyn Shotwell, president and COO of SpaceX, shared exciting updates about the company's ambitious Starship program. She described Starship as a transformative project and predicted it would soon become SpaceX's most valuable asset, surpassing even the highly successful Falcon program. So Starship will change everything. The cost of getting people and cargo to orbit will drop dramatically because we're not throwing out the rocket. Um, in addition, Starship is so big that the concept of how we put things in space, how people travel in space is totally different. Ultimately, I think Starship will be the thing that takes us over the top as one of the most valuable companies. We can't even envision what Starship is going to do to humanity and human, you know, humans' lives, and I think that will be the most valuable part of SpaceX. 
Shotwell revealed that SpaceX aims to achieve up to 400 Starship launches within the next four years. Achieving this milestone would not only redefine the company's operational capabilities, but also strengthen its position as a leader in the space industry. We just passed 400 launches um, on Falcon, and I would not be surprised if we fly 400 Starship launches in the next four years. 400 Starship? Wow. Yes. Yes, we want to fly it a lot. However, Shotwell also acknowledged the challenges posed by regulatory hurdles, which she believes slow down the pace of innovation. I mean, how hard is it to get permission to do that? Permissions are a different thing. Technology is easy. <laughs> Physics is easy. People are hard. You know, we never complain about regulation. It's that regulation in the U.S., maybe globally, maybe not China, um, but maybe everywhere else, regulation is slowing technology down. Uh, it's not helping, it's slowing. And all we ask is regulate industries, make them safe, make them right, make them fair. But you gotta go faster, much faster. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. Is SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launch India's GSAT N2 satellite from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on November 18? Marking a significant collaboration between SpaceX and ISRO, as it is the first time SpaceX has been contracted to launch an ISRO satellite. Following liftoff, the Falcon 9 rocket executed a successful stage separation approximately two and a half minutes into the flight. The stage then performed a controlled descent back to Earth, landing on a drone ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. It was the 19th mission for this particular booster. Meanwhile, the upper stage continued its journey into space, and approximately 34 minutes after liftoff, it deployed a payload into a geosynchronous transfer orbit at an altitude of approximately 36,000 kilometers above Earth. The GSAT N2, also referred to as GSAT 20, is a 4,700 kilogram high throughput communication satellite developed by New Space India Limited, the commercial arm of ISRO. The satellite's primary mission is to enhance broadband connectivity across India, especially in underserved rural regions. Additionally, it will provide in-flight internet services and improve overall data transmission capabilities, contributing to India's growing communication infrastructure. Traditionally, ISRO relied on European launch provider Ariane Space for deploying heavy payloads that exceeded the lifting capacity of its own rockets. However, with Ariane Space lacking operational rockets capable of carrying the GSAT N2, ISRO turned to SpaceX's Falcon 9. The Falcon 9's proven reliability and ability to handle heavy payloads made it a logical choice for this mission. ABL Space Systems, a startup founded in 2017, has announced its exit from the commercial launch market to focus on missile defense technologies. This strategic decision comes after a series of challenges and setbacks in their efforts to establish a foothold in the competitive small satellite launch sector, particularly with their RS-1 rocket. The RS-1 rocket was designed to provide cost-effective launches for small satellites, targeting the growing demand for low-Earth orbit deployments. However, the program faced significant technical and operational hurdles, including two major failures that undermined its progress. The first occurred during its inaugural flight in January 2023, when all nine engines shut down shortly after liftoff, causing the rocket to crash back onto the launch pad and be destroyed. This failure was attributed to an engine compartment fire linked to the launch mount design. Despite efforts to resolve these issues, ABL faced another setback during a static fire test before the second launch, causing irreparable damage to the vehicle and further delaying the program. This incident deepened doubts about the rocket's reliability, making it harder for ABL to compete in the challenging small launcher market. Recognizing these challenges, ABL's leadership acknowledged a shift in market dynamics, where established players and larger companies made it difficult for new entrants to compete effectively. This realization prompted ABL to pivot towards the development of missile defense systems, a field aligned with national security priorities, and one that offers more consistent revenue opportunities through government contracts. Dan Piemont, ABL's founder and president, expressed confidence in this new direction. He emphasized that the company's existing technology and expertise, originally developed for rocket systems, could be effectively adapted to meet urgent demands in missile defense. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave the comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.